What if the aircraft already labeled as 6th generation is being equipped with technology that makes it 7th generation? What if laser weapons, adaptive engines, and hypersonic missiles are about to turn the most advanced fighter ever built into something that belongs in science fiction? The answer isn't speculation, it's happening right now. The F-47 stealth monster is evolving, and what's coming next changes everything. The F-47 upgrade programs impact American military superiority due to breakthrough technologies that extend operational reach, multiply lethality, and counter threats that didn't exist when the aircraft was first designed. Here's why this matters. In January 2025, the Pentagon awarded General Electric and Pratt & Whitney $3.5 billion each to develop next-generation adaptive propulsion engines, triple the original contract value. These aren't minor improvements. These are engines that fundamentally transform how fighters operate. Internal Air Force documents from 2014-2016 reveal that directed energy weapons, specifically high-powered lasers, were designed into the NGAD program from the very beginning. The Air Force didn't plan for these weapons to be added later. They built the F-47 to carry them. And hypersonic missiles. The F-47 is being designed to integrate Mach 5 Plus weapons that can be controlled in flight by collaborative combat aircraft, creating an entirely new category of precision strike capability. The stakes. China revealed two sixth-generation fighter prototypes in December 2024. Russia claims its MiG-41 will fly by 2030. The technological race for air dominance is accelerating faster than anyone predicted. These F-47 upgrades aren't just improvements. They're the insurance policy that keeps America ahead when adversaries are closing the gap. Let's start with the propulsion revolution that makes everything else possible. The Next Generation Adaptive Propulsion Program is developing engines that can dynamically shift between maximum thrust and fuel-efficient cruising by adjusting the engine's bypass ratio in flight. Think about what that means. Traditional jet engines are optimized for one thing, either raw power or fuel efficiency. You can't have both. It's a fundamental engineering compromise that's existed since the jet age began. Adaptive cycle engines use a three-stream system. Alongside the usual core stream and bypass stream is an additional stream of air that can be redirected as required for different performance levels. Pratt & Whitney's XA-103 and GE's XA-102 engines are using digital design tools to accelerate development, compressing timelines that would normally take decades. The performance benefits are staggering. GE claims their NJAP offering will deliver 20% greater thrust and 25% improved fuel consumption, resulting in 30% greater range. For the F-47, that translates to operational capabilities no adversary can match. The high-efficiency mode may be crucial to achieving the F-47's maximum combat radius of almost double that of an F-22. We're talking about a fighter that can patrol deep into contested airspace, engage threats, and return home without aerial refueling, which eliminates vulnerable tanker aircraft from the most dangerous phases of combat. But there's a challenge. The NJA program is facing a two-year delay due to supply chain challenges with completion now expected in fiscal 2030 instead of 2027. That means early F-47s will likely fly with interim engines before NJF becomes available. Both General Electric and Pratt & Whitney completed detailed design reviews in February 2025, validating that their digital engine models are ready for the next phase, prototype assembly and testing. The Air Force will eventually select one design for production. Whichever wins, adaptive propulsion will fundamentally change what sixth-generation fighters can accomplish. Maximum speed when needed maximum range when required, maximum power for energy-hungry weapon systems, all in a single engine that adapts to mission requirements in real time. That's not incremental improvement, that's transformation. But revolutionary engines are just the foundation. This is where the future of air combat reveals itself. The Air Force Combat Command's internal history makes clear that directed energy weapons on future advanced stealthy combat aircraft were a key component of the NGAD ecosystem from the start. Laser weapons aren't an afterthought, they're part of the core design. The Self-Protect High Energy Laser Demonstrator, SHIELD, is being developed by the Air Force Research Laboratory, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman, to mount as an external pod on aircraft from fourth-generation F-15 fighters to sixth-generation aircraft currently in development. The mission? Target incoming air-to-air -air and surface-to-air missiles. Think about the tactical implications. An enemy fires a missile at an F-47. Instead of relying solely on countermeasures and evasive maneuvers, the fighter uses a high-energy laser to destroy the incoming threat. No kinetic interceptor required. No ammunition weight. No reload time. Just directed energy traveling at light speed. The directed energy system can protect the F-47 and its collaborative combat aircraft from incoming hypersonic missiles. That's a defensive capability that fundamentally changes survivability calculations in contested airspace. 
But defense isn't the only application. The laser could dazzle or blind low-orbiting enemy satellites. That means the F-47 becomes more than an air superiority fighter. It becomes an anti-satellite platform potentially operating under Space Force command for missions that extend beyond the atmosphere. The challenge is power and thermal management. High-energy lasers require enormous electrical power and generate massive heat. That's where the adaptive cycle engines become critical, providing not just propulsion but the electrical generation and thermal management capacity to run directed energy weapons without compromising flight performance. NGAP technologies will provide advanced survivability, fuel efficiency, and robust power and thermal management necessary to enable the required range, weapon, and sensor capability future platforms will require. The Air Force stated that directed energy integration would inform decisions on next-generation air dominance development strategy. These weren't parallel programs. They were designed together from the beginning. Now add hypersonic missiles to the equation. Hypersonic weapons traveling at Mach 5 plus speeds will be part of the F-47 weapons calculus, giving the United States another military advantage. But the real breakthrough isn't just carrying hypersonic missiles, it's how they'll be employed. Hypersonic weapons can be controlled in flight with collaborative combat aircraft, making targeting decisions and bomb damage assessment. The autonomous drones gather intelligence and process targeting data. The hypersonic missile adjusts course based on real-time updates. The entire system learns and adapts. Each hypersonic flight would get smarter on how to avoid enemy air defenses through artificial intelligence on board the CCA. Picture this operational scenario. The F-47 enters contested airspace commanding six CCAs. The drones spread out mapping enemy air defenses and identifying high-value targets. One CCA detects a critical command node 300 miles away. The F-47 launches a hypersonic missile. The CCA continues feeding updated targeting information. The missile maneuvers around newly activated air defense systems. Impact occurs before the enemy can react. That's not science fiction. That's the operational concept the Air Force is building toward. The combination of speed, intelligence, and network decision-making creates strike capability that adversaries cannot defend against with current technology. And when you add directed energy weapons for defense against incoming hypersonic threats, you create a platform that can both deliver and survive hypersonic warfare. But there's more to sixth-generation dominance than weapons. This is where human-machine teaming becomes operational reality. The F-47's manned-unmanned teaming arrangement means the sixth-generation fighter serves as a drone quarterback, controlling collaborative combat aircraft. The autonomous unmanned CCA's main mission includes intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance data collection, jamming and spoofing enemy aircraft and missiles with electronic warfare features, and carrying weapons. But the integration goes deeper than simple remote control. The CCAs are designed with artificial intelligence that handles tactical decision-making at speeds humans cannot match. They process sensor data, identify threats, recommend weapons employment, and execute maneuvers, all while the F-47 pilot maintains strategic oversight. Ultra-long-range missiles can be carried on both the CCA and F-47, creating a powerful and robust range of munitions. That means the pilot isn't limited by what the fighter itself can carry. The entire formation becomes the weapons platform. Next-generation precision-guided bombs will be controlled by the CCA, allowing the pilot to focus on flying the NGAD. The workload distribution is revolutionary. Humans make strategic decisions. AI handles tactical execution. And the force multiplication is exponential. One F-47 commanding eight CCAs effectively becomes nine aircraft. But because the drones are expendable and the pilot is protected inside the stealth fighter, Risk calculation changes fundamentally. Send CCAs ahead to probe defenses? No problem. Use drones as decoys while the F-47 strikes from an unexpected angle? Standard tactic. Distribute weapons across multiple platforms to overwhelm enemy air defenses? Built into the operational concept. This isn't a fighter jet anymore. It's a flying command center controlling a small air force. The Pentagon recognizes this paradigm shift. That's why procurement plans call for thousands of CCAs supporting hundreds of crewed fighters. The ratio matters. Multiple drones for every pilot creates the force structure needed for future conflicts. Now combine everything we've discussed. This is where sixth generation transcends into something beyond classification. The F-47 is expected to carry advanced missiles and possibly directed energy weapons with multi-role payload capable of various air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions. But when you integrate all these capabilities simultaneously, something remarkable happens. The aircraft stops being merely sixth generation and starts exhibiting characteristics that analysts are already calling seventh generation. Consider the capability matrix. 
adaptive engines providing unlimited operational range and power generation for energy weapons, directed energy systems engaging threats at light speed with unlimited magazine depth, hypersonic missiles delivering unstoppable kinetic strikes, AI-controlled drone swarms multiplying combat effectiveness, advanced stealth defeating detection systems, network-centric warfare connecting satellites, ground assets and naval platforms. Sixth-generation characteristics include advanced digital capabilities with high-capacity networking, artificial intelligence, data fusion, cyber warfare, and battlefield command and control. The F-47 incorporates all of these, but it goes further. Potential sixth-generation capabilities include directed energy weapons such as laser close-in weapon systems and potential capability for suborbital flight. Suborbital flight, that means briefly exiting the atmosphere to conduct missile defense operations or engage satellite targets. That's not a traditional fighter mission. That's space warfare. Some defense analysts speculate that future F-47 variants could integrate all these capabilities into a platform that operates across air, space, and cyber domains simultaneously a truly multi-domain fighter that defies current classification systems. The Air Force isn't officially calling this seventh generation, but the capability leap from fifth generation F-22s and F-35s to what the F-47 will become is as large as the jump from fourth generation F-15s and F-16s to fifth generation stealth, maybe larger. These upgrades impact global military balance due to their ability to counter threats that don't yet exist while maintaining dominance against current adversaries. In December 2024, China unveiled two sixth-generation fighter prototypes, generating worldwide analysis and speculation about their potential sophistication. Those revelations accelerated American decision-making about F-47 development. But here's the critical difference. While China is building prototypes, America is integrating breakthrough technologies into operational aircraft. The timing matters. By the time Chinese or Russian sixth-generation fighters reach operational status in the mid-2030s, the F-47 will have been flying with adaptive engines, directed energy weapons, and hypersonic missiles for years. The experience gap will be massive. And because the F-47 uses modular architecture and digital engineering, upgrades happen continuously. The aircraft is designed to be more adaptable to future threats and will take significantly less manpower and infrastructure to deploy. That means the F-47 of 2030 will be different from the F-47 of 2035 or 2040. It's a platform that evolves with the threat environment rather than becoming obsolete. The strategic message to adversaries is clear. Trying to match American air power isn't about building one advanced fighter. It's about sustaining a technology development pipeline that continuously pushes boundaries faster than rivals can respond. President Donald Trump hailed the F-47 as the crown jewel in the next generation air dominance family of systems. That's not marketing hyperbole. That's recognition that air dominance in the 2030s depends on capabilities that didn't exist five years ago. The F-47 successfully established itself as a platform that transcends sixth-generation classification through revolutionary upgrades, including $3.5 billion adaptive engine programs, integrated directed energy weapons, hypersonic missile capability, and AI-controlled drone swarms, leading to air dominance capability that redefines modern warfare. While adversaries scramble to field their first sixth-generation prototypes, America is already equipping its sixth-generation fighter with seventh-generation technology. While rivals debate whether directed energy weapons are practical, the F-47 is being designed to carry them operationally. While competitors struggle with hypersonic missile development, the Air Force is integrating those weapons with AI-controlled targeting systems. The F-47 didn't just meet sixth-generation requirements, it exceeded them so completely that new terminology may be required to describe what it's becoming. This isn't incremental advancement, this is paradigm shift. The F-47 Black Ghost represents more than advanced engineering. It demonstrates what happens when breakthrough technologies converge on a platform designed for continuous evolution, adaptive engines that rewrite propulsion physics, directed energy weapons that engage threats at light speed, hypersonic missiles that strike before adversaries can react. AI systems that multiply combat effectiveness exponentially. This is the future of air dominance, and it's arriving faster than anyone predicted. The first F-47 is already in production with first flight slated for 2028. That means these aren't distant concepts, they're near-term realities. Built by Boeing and powered by American innovation, flown by pilots who will command capabilities their predecessors could never imagine. The sixth generation has arrived, but it's already evolving into something beyond. The real show is just beginning.